The weather in Jiangnan is unpredictable in April. After a light rain, the air is clear. Cao Huangsheng is carving a piece of aloe wood at his studio in Chungkan village. Carvers must be very careful when carving with such precious material. But he's obviously on bad form today. For the past 20 years, his left wrist has continually hurt on rainy days. A broad-headed burin penetrated the skin and nearly severed my artery. It was really dangerous. Due to the manual work, carver's hands have a particular appearance. Their right palms are generally covered with calluses and their left hands with scars. In practice, I'd hold materials with this hand and the burin with the other. Injuries were normal. I had accumulated scars over the years. But his pains have paid off. Today, Cao has become famous and popular with woodwork collectors. When I arrived at his home, I was surprised. There were many kinds of bookcases and also many books. So I felt that I had found the right person, somebody I expected who would have a deep understanding of culture, art and aesthetics, and he seemed to fit that bill. Aloe wood is my life. Carving with such precious wood is like carving with one's body. I became determined step by step. His skills gained my recognition. As a Hui style wood carving practitioner, Cao is now enjoying his nationwide fame. But 30 years ago, he was only a little-known carpenter. Traditionally, in Huizhou, children are told to aspire to become an official, a merchant or a craftsman. As the old saying goes, you can sell everything except craftsmanship. So, when we quit school, our parents ordered us to learn crafts. Chungkan village is a typical Huai-style village in Huangshan city. Poet Zhu Xi referred to it as the most idyllic village in Jiangnan. Well-preserved historic buildings make it a kind of museum for Hui-style architecture. The elegant Hui-style buildings mainly feature woodcarving decorations. Local woodcarvers have become widely known over the centuries. Thirty years ago, Cao, aged 16, went to his uncle every day to learn carpentry. His uncle is famous. Usually a contemporary practitioner of the skill will have been apprenticed first. But at first, Cao had to spend a whole year doing dirty work with an axe and plane. At first, apprentices need to work only with the axe for 100 days and with the plane for a year. They must follow strict rules. Get up at 6 a.m., wash your face, 
carry back water and then go to work about five kilometers away. He could deduce from a simple sketch what tools would be needed and how to proceed with carving. He was a fast learner, but he was naughty. He always went home to evade onerous work, but would be cajoled back later. Of course, this wouldn't last for long, as he would simply flee again. Today, Cao and his uncle seldom talk about carving. Cao's uncle's career has mainly been focused on furniture decorations, which is of little attraction for Cao. We used to carve basic patterns in the limited time we had. Figures need more time to carve, but customers wouldn't accept that. The village was poor then, and big opportunities were rare. Cao could only learn basic skills. But today, students still need to learn these basic skills first. Currently, Cao has many students. Like his uncle, he also teaches them particular skills at the beginning. Be careful when carving this part, or it will break. It's a bamboo work. Liu Hai and the Golden Toad. It's carved out of a bamboo root. He is critical of everything. If we fail, he will criticize us and require us to redo the work until it meets his expectations. I'm still learning to carve this. It's hard. I feel everything is difficult to carve. I can't do anything well. The skills are traditional. I spent three years learning them. I have almost mastered them now. I can do it well, so I feel relaxed. Failures may discourage newcomers, but eagerness will also burden you. Tao had the same experience. When he finished his apprenticeship at the age of 19, carving was nothing but a job. Not until an opportunity came by accident did his life really change. The peculiar shaped Mount Huangshan in southern Anhui is not only a landmark but also a cultural symbol. Today, Chungkan village is part of the Huangshan scenic tour. Building this ancestral hall took centuries. The decorations are exquisite. Look at the carvings. They are indeed dragon heads. Well-preserved Hui-style houses and wood carvings attract many tourists. It was the rise of Hui merchants that spurred the development of Hui-style carvings. From the mid-Ming dynasty to the Qianlong era, Merchants enjoyed high prestige in Huizhou. They reached as far as Europe and possessed nearly half of the country's assets in their heyday. They also invested hugely in building homes after returning. There were government restrictions on dwellings. The construction of a private palace would never be allowed. There were certain rules, but there was no ban on carving decorations. 
That was no problem. The wealthy Hui merchants brought prosperity into wood carving. The craftsmen they invited from across the nation enriched the art of Hui style wood carving. Complexity used to be emphasized, as it was seen a sign of status. People used to compare works in terms of numbers of figures, patterns, extravagance, and the length of time spent. The pursuit of complexity brought elegance to Hui style works. The relief carving open work carving and round carving skills help create traditional appeal. Particularly, the hollowed out works with up to over 10 layers were really a great surprise. The subjects of the works vary from auspicious signs, religious figures and opera heroes to landscapes and animals. They were carved on beams and at a distance from observers. It's why hollowed out and half relief carving skills were preferred. The works are of spiritual and educational significance, promoting loyalty and patriotism, while focusing on historic tales and figures. Over the centuries, the village has become a world of woodworks, but not everyone here understands their charm. I was small then. Given my uncle was a carpenter, there were no other options for me, but it might also have been an advantage. Twenty years ago, Tao's life was changed by chance, during a routine visit to his uncle's home, 19-year-old Tao found a book and was attracted by a photo contained inside. The caption revealed it as a work of fellow townsman Zhu He Song, a carving master of the Ming Dynasty. I was surprised at the time I couldn't believe that a Wenfang Qinggong work could be so exquisite. It demonstrated to me that carving skills in the Ming Dynasty had been at a high level. As a subcategory of Hui style carvings, Wenfang Qinggong works refer to study room wear. They are more exquisite and culturally appealing than other kinds of carving work. Even a national treasure couldn't outdo this. I told myself I could also do something like this. I thought I should try to make something like that. Inspired by the photo, Cao hurled himself into his work. However, without a teacher, he could only consult the photo and attempt it through trial and error. Injuries became frequent. His wrist was injured during that time. It's normal. The blades are sharp. A little carelessness or fatigue can lead to injury. Without any guidance, Tao made many mistakes and wasted a lot of material. Some of my work, after having worked on it for over a month, I've had to give up. Later, I mastered the particular skill set and got back on the right track. Hui style carvings boast intricate details and lifelike features, which require sophisticated skills. A set of tools include over a hundred gravers with consecutive blade widths differing by one to two millimeters.
For example, I have a set of gravers with blades that are 1 mm, 1.2 mm, 1.5 mm, and 1.7 mm in width, and a set of curve headed gravers can even number over 10. To carve out work with more detail, Cao also learned tool making. After months of repeated failures, he completed his first ever work, a duplicated brush vase. Later, one of my cousins came to my home one day and saw my work. He was surprised. Did you make them? That cousin took one of Tao's works to the market and sold it easily. My first piece was sold for about 1,500 yuan. That was in the 1990s. That was a really good price back then. At that time, most employees earned less than 10 yuan a day, less than 10 yuan. So pocketing 150 yuan a day really excited me. It was unbelievable. Thus, the transformation from carpenter to woodcarving artist began. In Cao's safe, a piece has been carefully preserved. It is a duplicate made over 10 years ago. I don't want to sell it, though many of my friends want it. It means something special to me. So I have kept it rather than selling it. It's commemorative. Through over 20 years of reproducing historic masterpieces, Cao has mastered the art of carving and become fascinated with traditional culture and wood carving. Whilst reproducing historic works, I was constantly amazed that our ancestors' craftsmanship could be so admirable. They left us with such a great legacy something we can consult and learn from. Cao's works gradually became known, attracting many collectors to him. I brought agar wood this time. Make it into something without changing its shape too much. Tao can quickly provide a design based on the shape of any material he sees. Mr. Zhang, with regards to this material, I have a plan. Smoothen this side, since it's even, so we needn't cut out a lot of it. In my plan, there will be a man and a spring gushing out of the rocks, where the man stays while enjoying the melody of the spring. It's full of elegance and sparks interest. A quick design comes in a flash, but needs to be made into a sketch. It's called Dagao. Aga wood, the wooden diamond, is pricey. Carvers must use the material sparingly and rely much on their preliminary design. When drawing a sketch, you must take into account how you would carve out the scenery, figures and scenarios you have imagined, and how you can make it easy to carve. It's important.
Tao never studied fine art, but his designs are well proportioned and well outlined. Full of imagination and creativity. He is different and understands well the art of charm. To us collectors, if a piece after the first sighting becomes less interesting or less attractive, it's a failure. The charm of a work can attract you forever. Every time you see it, you can have new feelings and joys. It's what I've pursued and what I get from his work. Today, Cao has many agar wood pieces, proof of his reputation and success in the sector. But it's not the end, a meeting will inspire him still more. At 10 a.m. every day, famous sculptor Lin Jun Rei begins work at his studio in Beijing. He is famous for field yellow stone carvings. In 2002, Cao facing a career bottleneck was introduced to Lin. He hoped Lin could maybe advise him. He never received professional advice. The man preferred to rely on himself only. What he lacked was the ability to make his works lifelike. It's like a man without a soul. I didn't elaborate much, but he understood quickly. At Lin's studio, Tao observed Lin's works and was greatly inspired. His Buddhist figurines have vivid and exquisite countenances. The well-depicted facial features display a special charm, very special charm. Kui style works used to lack facial features and individuality. Inspired by Lin, Cao adopted new techniques, making his works more lifelike. Every time he would come to Beijing, Cao would visit Lin, who always gave him frank advice. Our talks always lasted till late into the night. He had many questions. Why is it? Why is that? And what is this? He studies hard and we share lots in common, so we talk about everything. These exchanges inspired Cao. He no longer felt confused. I once suggested to him to observe the works of others. Carvings in different styles have different unique features that we can learn and introduce into our own works. I changed my mind. There are many wonderful things. So I began studying.
pursuing is to find an easier way to represent more things. Cao is kind of dull and quiet. One of his few hobbies is growing bonsai trees. One day, while watering a bonsai pine, he came up with a quick idea inspired by the pine's trunk. This Huangshan pine has lived for over 100 years. On the tree, there are soraya-like bulges scattered over the chipped bark. It's totally a creation of nature. It's amazing. Its worn bark and natural vigorous beauty deeply inspired me. Cao began drawing sketches and thinking of a new way to carve. I wanted to make something to represent a section of its trunk and to use two kinds of precious materials. Cao used boxwood to simulate the trunk and sandalwood for the bark. But in practice, they were hard to bond together. What made it difficult? The biggest difficulty was to marry them up. In other words, two pieces of glass can be easily glued together, right? Because of their even surfaces. But on a wooden surface, there are wrinkles called zonghang. They are curved and twisted, just like palm prints that are irregular in every direction. To bond them together, I have to make the two surfaces perfectly fit into each other, representing the spirit of natural unity. Cao struggled with failures over the following three years, with countless attempts discarded. Can you see those very thin pieces of sandalwood? In fact, just after having been molded, they were two or three times as thick as they are now, but some parts were cut out of their surfaces to enable them to bond with the boxwood. An inaccurate thickness calculation will mean the wood will be cut right through. It's a frequent occurrence. If it occurs, no matter how long you have worked on it, the material is ruined and must be thrown away. Boxwood and sandalwood are imported and precious. They're seldom used just for trial runs. It made my heart ache. I bought them with my own money. Sandalwood is over 1 million RMB per tonne. A failure means a loss of both money and time, a double loss. Nonetheless, Cao carried on. In 2008, he finally completed the piece Heaven and Man, earning him wide applause. Today, Cao has been acclaimed as a master. His works are very expensive. But it hasn't changed him much. He remains humble and relaxes most of all when lunching with his students. The rest of his time, as before, is mainly spent in the studio. 
If unable to sit for long, a craftsman will fail. An intricate landscape work that spans about one square meter will take a whole year to carve. What makes you suffer is the long process in which you must keep calm and steady. It's really dull and dry. Once a naughty boy in his uncle's eyes, Cao today is quiet, stable and obsessed with wood carving. It's a result of the influence of time and also the local culture. Today, the Hui style fine arts freshmen of Anhui Normal University have come to visit Cao's exhibition. It's really good. He's so talented. The carvings are exquisite, vivid, lifelike. We're fine arts majors. These works make me eager to try to become his student. Do you enroll students? Frequently. Really? Yes. Can we sign up? Of course, of course. Where there is a will, there is a way. What do I think of it? I've been always happy doing it. Always happy. Like traditional Hui style works, Cao's work boasts exquisite, intricate, and perfect detail. But there are some differences. What are its unique features? Art should keep pace with the times, and he has done so. Many modern artistic elements have been integrated with his work almost seamlessly. How many cravers are there? Maybe more than 80. Why do you need so many chisels? They are for different purposes. Did you fix the blade yourself? Yes. Won't you hurt your hand? Cao will likely influence these students with his innovative spirit. It is his affection and sense of responsibility for traditional culture, more than his own talent, that have led to his success. The most important thing is how you understand the art. The deeper you understand it, the better your work will meet your own expectations. In fact, only the continuing innovation of the craft is of any real significance.